Brian's Come back on. in the chat, man. Brian called us live again. Shout out to you, man. With the super chat, he said, Eminem's albums are the most popular from the 2000s. That destroys your argument about replay value. You can fact check, but you won't. Uh, who else got 20-year-old albums with the numbers that they get today? Okay. Well, this is no, what no, I'm no. going to say. Replay no, no. value. Replay value. Who is playing this stuff? See, um, where is about, this stuff being You're talking played? about companies replaying it. I'm talking about the culture replaying it. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? You're talking about the business entity. I'm talking about when I asked Glove if he heard Kendrick's album, and he's like, well... I heard one song on radio. I was like, but what have you been hearing when you're outside? He's like, I haven't heard anything when I'm outside. That's what we're talking about. I want to I wanna read this first sentence again. He said, Eminem's albums are the most popular from the 2000s. Most popular to who? In hip-hop? That can't be right. You, you couldn't have been around the 2000s watching Rap City and say that. You know what I mean? Now, if you want to talk about they were the most popular on MTV and on TRL and stuff... And the people who were playing like Britney Spears and, you know, Backstreet and all of that, that could be argued. But in hip hop, I don't think so. You remember that DFX show that MTV used to have? Uh, no. They kind of had like a set that was like TRL. It had it going up against 106 in Park. Oh, it probably failed. Yeah, it did. But it was a dope show. I think, uh, okay. I think Lala hosted it. Caduce hosted it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. But Eminem, but Eminem wasn't getting no play on that show. I was up against 106. I used to just like flick yeah. over to see Lala right there. You go like back and forth. Eminem no, wasn't getting no Lala. Eminem wasn't getting no play on no hip hop ran shows, even on MTV. They saved his stuff for TRL. So if you want to say his albums were the most popular, to who? Is he our first pop rap artist? Vanilla Ice and Hammer, but. I mean, I guess they actually got some level of credibility thanks to 8 Mile. Yeah. I think he had credibility before 8 Mile, but never mind. Did he? Keep going. Where are we at with CJ this Kid with the Super Chat says, uh, if you had to treat QB's finest uh, for Nas's, if you had to, I'm sorry, treat QB's finest for, I guess you mean trade. If you had to trade QB's finest for Nas like uh, we, if you had to treat QB's finest for Nas like we treat, the dynasty for Jay and add it to Nas's catalog. Where would you rank QB's finest in Nas's discography? Okay, I got you. That no no commas be messing me up. Um, I don't think QB's finest is as good as the dynasty, in my opinion. But I do. In Nas's catalog, you think the QB's finest even registers though? Um. <clears throat> There's some special stuff on there, like Self Conscious with Prodigy. Mm -hmm. Find Your Wealth is on there. Mike, you're going to be hard pressed to find a better posse cut than The Bridge 2001. Would I be? A lot of Hall of Famers. <laughs> a lot a of lot Hall of, of Famers the on personnel's there. The personnel's great. Huh? A lot of Hall of Famers on that record, Mike. The personnel's great. They got the whole bridge on there. Got the, you got the bridge on the record. Yeah. Um, so there's some stuff on there. The, the We Live This Shit with Havoc and uh, Roxanne Shantae. Mm -hmm. No, nah, that shit hits hard, Mike. The pro Prodigy's stupid on the QB Finest album. I'm going to go back and listen to the QB's Finest you, album. You really need to. I mean, like, like, how about this song for some... Oh, Mike, Fire by Nature is on QB's Finest. That's mm -hmm. the best shit Nature ever did. He was literally on fire during that record. Yeah, I remember that the song. best shit he ever did. Fire is the shit. Like, yeah, I mean, just for me, my song for song, I think there are better records on QB's Finest than the Dynasty because I think after 1900 Hustler and This Can't Be Life, I would probably think, take, like, if we were doing best 10 songs between the two albums, I would probably take This Can't Be Life and 1900 Hustler. But then the next seven songs I would take would probably be QB Finest songs. Hmm. That, might, yeah. that sounds like it might be a Patreon. Uh, DiCarlo, do that. DiCarlo with the Super Chat says, uh, Mike just be putting anyone over Eminem. Thanks for keeping it 100. <laughs> I don't think AZ's just anyone, but okay. You do, Mike. You be Eminem like, man, that was from the side, I got Eminem. Yo, 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 yo. Eminem fans are insane. We posted on According to Hip Hop that, you know, Haley got engaged, and congratulations to her and her fiance. And you should see the things. That these Eminem stands are saying in the comment section, like, better treat her right, man. Uh, like, they know this motherfucker. It's crazy. <laughs> Y'all, Eminem stands are insane, man. 
And I'm, and, and, you know, shout out to her. I'm, and, you know, they were mad that we didn't post the guy's name. Like, so y'all niggas, the people in the comments, they were mad because we didn't post the fiance's name. So y'all people could go out there and and camp out in front of his house or something. Like, dang. <laughs> Let the man marry his woman, man. Congratulations to them. Our man with the super chat says, based on um, Dead End Hip Hop's rating, Doom, uh, some members rank Doom higher than Jay-Z. Interesting. Uh, Gary, <laughs> Gary Pierce with the super chat says, Nas has 15 studio albums, two lost tapes, and three collabo albums. The Firm, QB album, and Distant Relatives. Damn. How is K-Dot in the universe, let alone in the conversation? That's a fair question. That is a fair question. I mean, I know they want to say we're Nas channel and all that, but everything you just laid out there, and not to mention all the tons and tons of unreleased material that didn't make it on any of those efforts. Uh, BCM with the Super Chat says, nah, Asiatic is a classic. Yeah, man. AZ I like Asiatic. I like AWOL too. Yeah. Uh, Gary Pierce of the Super Chat says, uh, Jay has three classics. That's it. Several good albums. Um, let's see. Get some more Super Chats. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, American Gangsta is not a classic. That's Jay's fans trying to sneak a classic in because he's spitting some dope talk. I Am is better by miles. Wow. Uh, Web Visibility with the Super Chat says, for all the hate Nas has gotten for his best, for his beat picking, I would say Eminem is the worst beat picker out of um, Billboard's top 10. Ooh, By far. What? Now, 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 hold on. By now, far. Want, now, now, if you want to talk about something that I will be in agreement with you on criticizing him on, I do not love his beat selection at all, and I never really have, especially with him having Dre in the fold. How about this? Everything that I just said about, about Kendrick to Glove, and I was like, man, sound like Kendrick need you and Dre back in the studio making some shit. I could say that about him, too. It's like, Kendrick's I don't know, whatever production. y'all cooking up. Like, how about this? They need to tell him and Kendrick, no, 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 you rap over this beat because I said so, nigga. Well, Kendrick's production is leagues ahead of Eminem's production. Eminem's production has a problem because he can't rhyme over rhythmic tracks. And he has to rhyme over pulsating tracks. He has a rhythm issue. And... That's why his beats are the way that they are. <laughs> you are so disrespectful. He, he does. He can't rhyme over a DJ Premier track. He runs from it. He's from Detroit and has never rhymed over a Dilla track. He runs from it. He can't. And even when Dre, the great Dr. Dre, produces for him, he changes up his whole style so it fits to Eminem's style. Even when Eminem gets in a cipher with the uh, Slaughterhouse, they have to change the beat for him. He gets on the record with Conway the Machine. They have to change the beat for him. He has a rhythm issue. He can't rhyme over the stuff that other MCs are rhyming over. I mean, proof positive. It is what it is. I'm not going to do this with you today. It's the truth. I gave you evidence. So, so give me the reason why, you know, on this 2001 album where everything is grandiose. So you, you got stuff, no, no, you no, got no, stuff like, like, hold on, let me, let me no, finish no, no. my thought no. real quick. Let me finish my thought for the people. <laughs> you got grandioso stuff like next episode. You got stuff like still DRE. But when he gets on the track, it's won't, 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 Like, come on, man. They have to change the beats for him. You want to know what? Funk Flex clown ass can issue challenges. Let's issue a rhyme challenge. We want to hear Eminem rhyme on a DJ Premier beat. Is that what you want? You want some? It's never gonna happen. Just limited to DJ Premier. Can we do like Pete Rock, Large Professor, RZA? Will those? Will that do, Mike? Will that be sufficient for you? Give me DJ Premier Adilla. I if I can hear. find, if I can find Eminem rapping over a beat from somebody who is technically considered to be a quote unquote uh, rhythmic hip hop producer, Mike, will you? You stop this. If he rhymes over a DJ Premier track or a J Why Dilla does it have track, to be Premier? because Royce is in a group with Premier. Royce has done two albums with Premier. He had uh, Premier doing a Slaughterhouse record on a shady album. He dodged it. 
Mac Miller has rhymed over Premier stuff. Premier has always been the standard. If you can really rhyme, you rhyming over a Premier record, right? So how does uh, Royce get in a group with Premier and we've never heard Eminem over a Premier track? I'll settle for Dilla too because Dilla is Detroit and you're supposed to be Detroit. You ain't never rhymed over a Dilla track. Everybody from Detroit's rhymed over a Dilla track in his era. Got a rhythm issue. And there's no easier producer to rhyme over than it is Dilla, man. Dilla makes the beats that make you want to rhyme. Leroy Green with the Super Chat. I can't even front. I was just Mike. I was just listening to Dilla beats last night just because. And it's like I almost, I got lost for a minute. Yeah. How the hell yeah. Eminem ain't never rhymed over a Dilla track? That's fraudulent. Sorry. Drums is different, Mike. Yeah, like it's I was rhythmic. listening, didn't you know? Even when didn't yeah. you know came on, I was like, "Well, that's you can." It's just, rhythmic. Drums are different. You can't go out there on on that shit. Be like one man on the planet. Like you can't do that stuff on there. You got a pro- who who produced any man, Mike, on sound bombing? Who produced any research. man on sound? No, no, no. Go ahead. You do the super chats. I'm gonna do the research. Okay, go ahead. Leroy, I mean, Mike, the super we can't, chat. Mike, we can't trust you, Mike. You might not give us the right. <laughs> I don't make up things. Leroy Green with the Super Chat says, respectfully, this is why I don't want to see Benny turn into Sky Zoo because it becomes about being uh, dope for not having big records. Goats Pause. do both equally. Pause. You want to know what? This is what I mean when I'm saying, like, Glove changed my mind about some things. So, you know, I love Griselda. I love what they're doing. I love what they bought back. They bought back that core East Coast hip hop sound and aesthetic that I grew up on, quite frankly. That mm-hmm. that mob beat, that Nas, Big L, Biggie, Locks, Wu, Tribe to a degree, because Tribe boom back. Tribe's a rap group, Mike. They're a real hip hop group. I hate when people try to make it seem like, but they're not. It's like no yeah, motherfucker. Have you heard those beats? They're a rapping ass rap group. All right, stop that. Even Daylight, Mike, they're a rapping ass rap group. They're a rap group, mm-hmm. Mike. Stop trying to make them into some alternative fucking flower pot fucking kids. They're from the fucking island, Mike. They're from Long Island and Queens. Like, stop making it seem like they come from a different place than these other dudes, you know, at the same time. But Griselda's bought a lot of that back, Mike. But it's like, <clears throat> these conversations with Glove have made me be like, well, it's like, man... No, these moments matter when you, like, make these records. And maybe it's like there's a such thing as being, like, too tapped into the streets where you're so tapped into the streets that you never really realize what your full potential could be. And I'm going to tell you what, because of talking to Glove, and I say this, I've been going back and listening to Benny's first album with Hit Boy. Burden of Proof? Mm Mm-hmm. It's better than I thought, Mike, because he was trying to make sure that him and his camp didn't get pigeonholed a certain way and you need practice and you need to break free. And so I'm excited about the re up with hit because it's like, I think he needs to do it because it's like, how about this? Like, I know for whatever it is with uh, him and Gibbs, you know what I mean? But like one way flight, Mike, like that was one of the records on there. It's like, no, no, no. You hit the mark with that. And some more of that does maybe change things. Do I think he's about to make nothing but a G thing? It's like, no. But what Leroy was just saying was very, very valid. You know what I mean? And so what I'm hoping is, is, is that they're like really, really cooking up. But also, too, that's why I hit them up. It's like, no, no, no. I want to I wanna support that and get that out like any way that I can help, too. I think like we should do a, um, not to interrupt you, I think we should do oh, a station head uh, for when that album drops. I think, you know, I know, Hit Boy hadn't responded to you yet, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, we put together a station head or whatever. Those guys would be very responsive and, um, you know, being a part of that. And I think it'd be fun. I think it's an album worth listening to in mass with the people. Because when we did that KD3 listening event, that was fun. I want to do that again or, or with some new music. So, I mean, I mean, not being funny, you know, like... <clears throat> If Nas don't want to pull up, like, you know what I mean? That's cool, because, you know, he's kind of like, you know, he's Nas. So that is what it is. But it's like, and I'm not being funny, and I'm not being arrogant when I say this. It's like, no, we do have over a million followers on all of our social media platforms, and we are impacting the culture. And so it's like, no, I feel like we can help. 
like like in a positive way like with the Benny and the Hit Boy thing, mm-hmm. and I want to, and also too, and here's what I'm saying is it's like, well, I don't think people understand, Mike, is it's like, well, sitting down and breaking bread with us, it's like, well, we can cycle that out everywhere, every which way on top of whatever work that y'all doing. I already see the work that Wesley Griselda puts in. It's like, well, why wouldn't you want to have more people working to help your cause? It's like, that's, because that's really what the media is really supposed to do, Mike. Mm-hmm. Like the media is really supposed to help the cycle of all this stuff, get out and siphon out and let the people decide who's the best. Right, right. It's our job to just put you in the cycle. Yeah. We're not supposed to tell. We're really not supposed to tell. Like, we do a show where we do a music review, but we're really not supposed to tell people who's the best and who's not. We're supposed to put it in the cycle and let the people decide. Right. Now, I feel like we've grown enough and impacted enough that we can actually, like, jump in the cycle and, like, like, like help things some and, and would like the opportunity to do so. You yeah. know? It'll be fun. And, you yeah. know, everybody will win. Uh, AB I mean, Studio. I, I offered to go to Cali, but I'm looking for an excuse to go back to Cali, Mike. <laughs> AB Studio with the super chat says, "Which producer you favorite? Jay? Uh, I'm sorry, Jay's albums. Just Yay or P? I thought he were gonna ask Yay or Just Blaze. Um, Just Yay or P? Well, I don't think. Yeah, you know how I feel about the Neptunes. I don't even think they're in that conversation. It's gonna be between Just and Yay, and I just think." From a ground level, Kanye West is just a better album producer than Just Blaze. Although, Just Blaze has probably made some of Jay-Z's strongest songs because of the vibrato of it all. But I think when times change and you're not looking for just, I guess, a 2003 sound or a sound from a certain era, you got to go with Kanye West. I think that that right now for a new Jay Z album, I think that's the best pairing that he could do. Uh, I mean, I think Kanye is probably the best pairing just about anybody could do, but I don't think Jay's gonna go to Kanye. I think that it's kind of a. I could be wrong. This is just the fan talking. I don't know the intricacies of it. I don't have any outside information or inside information for uh, for that matter. But it feels like Jay-Z wants to prove that he can do this without Kanye in tow. Because Kanye has really been involved with pretty much all of his, many of his successes, big successes, musically, over the past 20 plus years. I mean, I'm not going to give him a lot of credit for the Black Album. I'm not. No, 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. So I'll give him the blueprint help. But even with the blueprint help, Mike, that's only half. He set the bl- he set the blueprint for the blueprint. He might have set the blueprint for the blueprint. Because, I mean, we heard Just Blaze records well, before that. Well, how about this? Let's give him half because Bink was still there mm-hmm. and so was Just. So let's give Just and Bink half and let's give Kanye half. And we how also about- know, I don't know about Bink's records, but we also know that those records like Never Change, Heart of the City, those were older records. Like, he actually sold that to a Chicago group that never changed. Remember they had to run down on them and all that shit. Everything else was kind of made on the spot. So it's kind of noted that those records that Kanye made for the blueprint, they had some age on them. You know what I mean? I love those records more than y'all do, but I understand what those records are. Like production wise, I love them more than y'all do too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like as far as Kanye, the producer, like the way that I revere him, it's like, quite frankly, it's like, well, I think about the beats that are on his albums, not on other people's albums. That's the stuff that I really remember from him beat-wise. It's like, how about this? Ain't no damn crack music on the blueprint. <laughs> no, I agree. He tailors the production to the artist. I mean, we saw what he... I think the production job he did on B was better than the production job he did on the blueprint. It was, but that. But this is what I mean about the beats, though. It's like, well, outside of like the corner... Which beat on there is really like, you know what I'm saying? Like up there with the beats that's on his best shit. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm trying to think. The best produced album that's not his album. Yeah, he gave himself it's the beat. best. He yeah. gave, but he gave, I told you, Mike, when I was doing the Kanye versus Kanye, the main thing that I noticed was like, man, Kanye gave Kanye the best shit still. Mm-hmm. And I think the closest that he came to giving somebody else the best stuff around the time he was doing something was Common with B and Push for Daytona. What Kanye is able to do, and I'm sure most hip-hop producers do this anyway, but he's such a talented producer 
that, and he's such a fan and a hip hop head, he taps into what he likes the most about those MCs, right? And so it's kind of like he gets to know them as a fan and kind of directs them into their strong points and kind of makes them believe. No. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Any man is produced by the beat miners. Okay. So don't tell me that the man don't have rhythm. That's the beat miners. come on, man. Any man is... Come on, man. No, that's a I want to hit this nigga over with some permission. Any man. No, no. You, I'm you're sorry. Saying... You, any man is not going to even be in any type of Eminem discussion. The only people who know any man like that is the people who follow Soundbomb. And let's be real. And if we go back and listen to that Hold record on, like Mike, that we now, didn't ask, No, Mike, stop doing that. You asked about rhythm. And, with, and you pulled out a record from Dude, damn near before he was even signed. People who have rhythm. Yeah, and beat miners actually adjusted their track once again. Any man doesn't sound like the rest of the stuff they made. Everybody has to change their style when they make a beat for him. Gary Pierce with the Super Chat says, Replay value isn't Billboard charts or RIAA certification or MTV. Uh, from Billboard standards slash pop standards, it should be M, Drake, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, Tupac from sales and charts. I agree. Like, replay value is not record sales. Come on, man. Um, let's see. I know we're missing a whole bunch of Super Chats. Let me catch up with these real quick. 36 Chambers sure. says, uh, My son's teacher assigned a rap poetry assignment tonight and used Eminem as a barometer for what, an MC, uh, for what MC's writing should be. Uh, should I have, <laughs> should I have him listen to uh to the she bong she boing 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 song for a written inspiration? I think you should. I think you should. I think that uh, I want to know what records they're actually talking about that are, I guess, literary standards. Maybe it's rap so, guy. Let me ask you something. So Maybe it's like shama la ba nama 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 nama. So let me tell you something. Uh-huh. Eminem rapping on guilty conscience or role models isn't good enough for you. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, Ain't no niggas bumping that stuff, Coop. No, let's not be No, no, no. We're talking about man. rhythm, Mike. Mike, we're not talking about <laughs> niggas bumping shit. we talking about you Come said on. he can't rap on rhythm. You said he has a rhythm yeah, issue. Yeah, he has a rhythm issue. And so, and can, so can you hear him robbing on no, Let I'm Me just, Ride? I, Mike, I'm just trying to qualify <laughs> what you quantify as him having rhythm issues. So any man by the beat miners isn't helping with the rhythm issues. Role models and guilty conscience produced by Dr. Dre not helping with the rhythm issues. I'm just making sure that we're clear. Right? Right. He, he do you hear him rhyming over Let Me Ride or something like that? I don't know. I don't know many rappers that can rap over Let Me Ride, actually. I mean Dr. Dre could, I mean, fine. Yeah, with Snoop and the DOC right there writing it and telling them how to do it. Of course he could. <laughs> Mike H with the super chat says, You guys were lukewarm on uh KD one. Don't apologize for keeping it real in regards to Nas. Yeah, I mean, KD1 was, I think it's the weakest of the four, to be honest. What? It was What's cool. the weakest of the four? KD1. I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. when KD1 oh, came out, yeah. we were like, yo, this is better than I expected. KD2 came around like, whoa, they just then got better. And then Magic came, was like, what's going on? And then KD3, it's like, they out of here. Lex Diesel with the Super Chat says, Nas' song with Scarface called Hip Hop may be one of his most slept on collabo records ever. I forgot all about that song. That's a great record. Is that the DJ Khaled record y'all talking about? What? Remember if I get locked up tonight? Yeah, I had that uh, that Funk Flex CD. Big Cap. Rest in peace to Big Cap. So no rhythm was like, still? Um, no, I mean, it's still no one of them. Cool, cool. It's still one of them pulse beats. It's like, doom, doom, doom. It's like How about it's what's no the difference, Mike. What's the difference? He was the offbeat on that song. He was, cause exhibits in there. Why you play with it? Uh, it's like why y'all play with it. Perpetrate, stay with it. Never do about the next level until Dre did it. He comes in there. Uh, <laughs> it's like sorry, Dre. Ooh, well, let's no, do no, this no, shit Mike, right now. This fucking weed no, is in me. No, 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 Mike. <laughs> I got you. This say shouldn't be this say. difficult, Coop. No, say what you say. You can't say pulse shit beats. about say what you say. Pulse beats. And he's not off beat on say no, what they, you say. No, these are pulse beats. It's like boom, boom, the dum, dum, dum. No, Mike, that has dum, drums in the bass line. No, man, these aren't rhythms, man. 
Hey, what you say is produced by Dr. Dre. You're it not is. about to tell me that this shit don't have no baseline. I'm not saying that you made that part up. I'm not saying they have You're a baseline. You're talking about rhythm, right? It doesn't what we have rhythm rhythms. On? It doesn't. You have to make pulse right. beats for Eminem. So say what you say isn't is, isn't rhythmic, rhythm, rhythmically inclined. It's not, no. <laughs> Libra Day with the super chat says, uh, someone named Nikki M. Drake album better than B, huh? Someone named Nikki M. Drake album better better than B. Hmm. Not crack sure. a bottle, Mike. Crack a bottle. Oh, oh, my bottle. Not really a big fan. Brian with the super chat says three a.m. I like three a.m. 4 a.m. What was it? 3 a.m. 3 a.m. I don't it's think 3 a.m. You know 3 a.m. is hard, Mike. Come but on. It, it's not rhythm. It's kind of that rock rap stuff. You know, I you actually, know what? I actually See, like. No, I mean. no, no. Hold on, hold on. I like when he does the rock rap stuff. Like I love. Um, Let's pause. You want to know what we're doing? What's Fuck that? all these battles. We're playing Eminem's catalog on Patreon. Let's do it. I'm excited. We're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm excited. You're turning into the problematic one. I want you to understand. <laughs> I'm excited. Brian with the super chat. I know Brian's going to chew me out for this. He says, Mike, I was talking about his album popularity today, not back in the day. Spotify charts, uh, YouTube videos, etc. Uh, currently, the Eminem show is the most popular 2000s album. Mockingbird is number one song. Um, we ain't actually, talking about that. The Eminem show is the highest selling rap album of all time or hip hop album of all time. Is it? Um, it is. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It but, is. I mean, I'm, I, you think it's ridiculous? I mean, no, I mean, it's not even a top 50 rap album in terms of quality. So, yes, I would like it's the his quality best to say, album? like, here's what people have to understand. OK, see what makes Thriller and Purple Rain and albums like that special isn't just like the album sales and the notoriety and the legend behind it. It's that the actual quality of music actually matches the output of what you see so when you see the shit going diamond two times it's like no 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 no. it's supposed to be going diamond two times when doves cry and billy jean is on these motherfuckers it's supposed to be going diamond two times and so i am surprised because when an album hits big there is usually a relationship to the quality that is high when it hits on a certain level it is it's always been this way well he's the highest selling He's the highest selling rap artist of all time. It's his best album. And it dropped around the time that, you know, he put out a motion picture. And so, yeah, I mean, I think all no, stars. It's, it's like a rap purple rain. Like, it's like a rap purple rain. But that's what I'm saying. Purple rains, like, like purple rains weak song is like, baby, I'm a star. But imagine if, I mean, close your eyes and imagine if Prince was white making this music. He was androgynous and he light skinned it with like like some sort of like like mohawk wig jerry curl. But imagine if he tights and a blouse. Imagine if he was white and he dyed his hair blonde and he went after um, you know pop stars and stuff on his music and still made Purple Rain. The sales would be out of here. He didn't need to do that. He's Prince. He just made Purple Rain. I understand that. I'm just saying he, he would have done two rain. times more than that. No, no, I get what you're saying. If you're you're saying, had he been white, Purple Rain's the biggest selling album of all time, yeah, not Thriller. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I get it. I get it. No, I hear what you're saying. But we can't change these things, though, Mike. And we can't dock him for being white, but so much. I'm not docking him. I'm just putting in context this record sales stuff. No, the, 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 but okay, but this is what I'm saying. You put the context with the record sales stuff, but then you go to the context of, well, the soul stuff. And then well, you go to the context he, of the rhythm stuff. He, so all, all of the context is based on him being white, though, Mike. He runs from DJ Premier Tracks. Rhythm is a big part of hip-hop. You have to be able to catch the beat. You know what I mean? Uh, Mo Better Co. with what the Super Chat. Ooh, Mike, Superman. Don't get me wrong. I love these hoes. There's no, oh, no, he's skating on Superman, Mike. He's skating on Superman. <laughs> Let me get to these Super no, Chats. I'll, Superman, I'll, address that. I'll address that. Mo Better Co. with the Super Chat says, uh, Some of M's beats are very Looney Tune-ish. Um, Jay Short with the Super Chat says, um, Would you guys take K-Dot's first three albums, A Black Star, Train of Thought, and uh, Quality? Uh, my point is, Kwali had a similar start to Kendrick, but we have to see it play out before we give him number two. Interesting. DiCarlo with the Super Chat says, Mike, that was hilarious, and you're right. 
I'm not sure which part he was talking about, but I feel like I've been right the whole time, DiCarlo. Been right the whole time. <laughs> AB Studio with the Super Chat says, Kanye rapped over DJ Premier Beats. Listen to um, Better Than I Ever Been song uh, with KRS and Rakim. And Nas is on there, too. Uh, is he talking about the classic song? There's a lot of gems um, by verse-wise by Ye in the past, yeah. But we just can't say that Eminem doesn't have rhythm because he hasn't rapped over a DJ Premier beat. That's not fair. He's been working with Dr. Dre his whole career. He has rhythm and time in Mike. Okay. He does. Dr. Dre changes up his production whenever he No, no, no. Both, but, hold on. But can't both things be true? I think there's a reason why he changes up his production. I think there's a reason why... He doesn't rhyme over Premiere or Dilla tracks. I think there's a reason why he gets on a record with Conway yeah. and the beat has to change when but he what, when it gets to his part. There's a but reason what you, for but that. What you're, what you're saying is is slightly dangerous to me because what you're inferring is is that the white boy don't have no rhythm because white boys don't have no rhythm and that's just not the case. Well, it's not just. I mean, it's just a it's an Eminem issue. Obviously, that wasn't Mac Miller's issue. He got on DJ Premier tracks and was sliding. He got on um, uh, the same sample that, um, 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 damn, Lord, um, well, I'm talking about Lord Jamar. You know what I'm talking about. Um, Lord Finesse. Yeah, hold on, hold on. He hold jumped on, on the Lord Finesse, Finesse somebody, track. I think somebody killed. just said what I was trying to say in the chat. Hold on, let me and get to these super chats. I don't want to oh, skip no, 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 people. Hold on. I don't no, want to skip it, people. S.B. made maybe the comment of night. Eminem has rhythm, but no soul. I think you're talking about the soul, not the rhythm, Mike. Okay. Well, that still keeps him from rhyming over Premier and Dilla tracks. Why can't, does he you can't run? control. You can't control what MCs rhyme over Mike and say that he. Oh, how about this? Any other he MC runs from no, no, Premier no, no, Mike, Any other MC that would say I, that hasn't rhymed over Dilla or Premier tracks is black. You wouldn't say that they don't have rhythm because of those things. And yeah, if everybody was changing up the beat whenever they came in the room, yes. Like, why does he always have to get his beat changed for him? Why does somebody have to make a quirky beat? You remember with the um, you remember the Missy album, the Real World, her sophomore album. Yes. Even the um song that he's on on there, Timberland had to change it up to some. I mean, there's a reason why producers are doing this. They're not just doing this to do it. He can't rap over certain stuff. It is what it is. Why? Why do you think even on uh the Blueprint? Everything on the blueprint is soulful. We get to Renegade, and it sounds like it does. He can't rhyme over Heart of the City. He but can't you're rhyme over about, no kind. Once again, no, no, no. no. The hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick. Soulful, not he rhythmic. Can't, cool. Forget Premiere for a minute. You're on the blueprint. You can't even rhyme over a Kanye or Just Blaze or Bink track. You said soulful, though, Mike. Even you yourself said it's not soulful. It's rhythmic. It's just not soulful. Some Kendrick answer. doesn't lot. Kendrick and Black Thought do it a whole lot, Mike. Jay Never Short with the word, Super Chat. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I think Eminem and fellow Detroiters, Black Milk would be a good combo. Both have a similar rhythm, but I don't think Eminem's fan base would allow that collabo because they don't like hip-hop. I think that's Ooh, weird, hold too. on. You want to know what, Mike? No, I got you. Okay. Some of Eminem's early freestyle, you know what one of Eminem's favorite beat is, right? There it's phone tap, Mike. There's freestyles of him rhyming on phone tap. If I can find the freestyles of him rhyming on phone tap, will you let this go? No. Because the glove got rhythm. And phone that tap was a million rhythm. years ago. No, I want recent stuff. But you have to like, see, see how you're changing the argument? I like, want like, oh, but That was stuff. years ago. It's like you want some evidence that he can rap yeah. over over something with some soul. There's definitely some, there's definitely some soul. On now, that. everything that you're naming is Slim Shady Eminem stuff. I want to hear, I'm not afraid Eminem <laughs> over some rhythm shit. But, Mike, it's like riding a bicycle, Mike. Once you learn how to ride the bike, you don't forget how to ride the bike. Where is that? So if, he, so if he can ride a phone tap beat in 98, then he can ride it in 2022, Mike. Can you know, he? You He's don't not the same like that you, Mike, no. That's like playing a quarterback position. It's like when you start seeing certain things, you never stop seeing them once you start seeing them. Your body may start breaking down, but you don't lose like rhythm and timing. It's just the timing and the rhythm may get slower as you get older. Tom Brady didn't lose his rhythm. It's just the rhythm is slower because he's older, so the reaction is slower. 
you're comparing him to great people. He's not that great. And um, and I don't think that he's proven that he could do those things to that level for me I to feel like. You, I just named you, songs. You're naming, you you're like naming songs oblivion. No rhythm, you're, naming, like. you're naming subpar records that really aren't rhythmic that ain't nobody. I just said phone tap. I ain't never heard that shit. I ain't never heard it. it. must not be that good. Hold on. Man, hold on, hold on, Mike. How is the record, the, how is any man subpar? When the fuck did it sub, did, did any man subpar? I don't know. I was talking about his, See, his no, no, no. See, no, I'm talking about his phone. Tap. You're, like, just, like, you're changing it. No, 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 Coop, you Coop, you're changing subpar. it. It's forgot about Dre subpar, Mike. Coop, you're you're changing it. Subpar. What I said was Bullshit, the phone. Mike. You're not letting me finish. You're not going to let me finish, Coop. Coop, you're not going to let me finish. What's the difference subpar? Cool, you're not gonna let me finish. You're changing you everything I said. That you know not you're not even listening. On you gonna like, let me finish, Coop? Because you're full of shit. No, man. Like, you gonna let I'm me finish? I didn't say that. What I said was the phone tap freestyle was subpar, and then you start throwing in all the other stuff. I didn't say no, that. Mike, but I've already named all those other records, and you said that wasn't enough evidence. I How said that they. What I said. What I, what I said about any man, and what I said about those other records you named was that they changed the beat and their style. To adjust to him, but I'm it wasn't giving you what, examples like that's of not the beat minor beat style. Change on what's the difference? The beat's not changed. He's off beat on what's the difference, and I said that too. What I said he's not was off beat on what's he the is. difference. Right? He is. You know what? You know what? The first thing he said on what's the difference? Stop the beat a minute, right? Isn't that what he said? And then he just started <laughs> damn near talking. So I'm just, I'm just being real. Stop the beat a minute. I got something to say. Hey, let me say this shit right now. Why this fucking weed is in me? That's on rhythm? I love you, dog. I got your motherfucking Dre, back. Just know that shit. Forgot about Dre. <laughs> Again, another beat change. And like I it's said in the beginning. Change. It's still a beat Dr. No, Dre No, what beat. I'm saying is. You don't get to pick the Dr. Dre beats that have rhythm or not, though, Mike. Cool, cool. You Who can't... produced Forgot Let's About Dre? Cool, cool. I hear you. And you just no, you, I don't think you do. You're because not you're listening. To, can you let me finish? No, you're picking and choosing to make. I'm your not argument. picking and choosing. You're not even letting me talk. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you can listen to the production on 2001, and you listen to those beats, and you tell me that "Forgot About Dre" doesn't stick out production wise like a sore thumb. It's clearly tailored for the individual, and it makes sense with the interview that you did with the glove that this song it's was older. made in '97. Right. It wasn't even made around that time, so and you it's know not why? About the rhythm. It's about the timing. It's and the about age the of sound. It. Dre has to change his production style to fit him. Eminem can't just adjust to other producers. The producers have to adjust to him because he has a rhythm issue. Or the soul issue. The job Whatever. is to adjust to the artist. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, now you guess it's the producer's job to adjust to I the guess. artist. Let's get to I, our next I topic. I guess. This is wild. It it's seems just like... funny, Mike. You have these ideals about things, but when it comes to him, the ideals start changing. It's like, no, I guess I, it's I'm the just producer's saying, job when, to adjust when it comes to... The to it's funny though when what, it's what 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 did Hit Boy just get done doing on KD three adjusting to the well artist? you know what Hit Boy did what I, what I feel like Hit Boy threw Nas a whole bunch of stuff and Nas caught it no one ever does that for him people have to adjust to him because there's only a certain box that he can rhyme in production wise that's why his beats are so bad. BCM with the super chat says Armani Caesar had the best album out of Griselda. That's an interesting take. Uh, I would go for Pray for Paris, but you know, it's just me. Eric Terrell says, Mike, do you think Jay would work with Hit Boy? Uh, for a whole album, I would like to hear it, but I think after what Jay, what Nas and Hit Boy just did, I don't see Jay doing that. I would see him kind of going more so. Uh, um, a no ID route again and running that back before he does that. But I think that'd be dope. Hit boys on fire just, right I'm now. I'm just asking questions, Mike, because it's like <laughs> And I'm just trying to answer them. <laughs> but it's like, you know, no, no. It's just like when you say things about rhythm, it's like, I mean, you understand that this guy's rapped on Dr. Dre's beats more than anybody else, and you're trying to say he doesn't have rhythm. What I'm saying, Coop, and I've said this probably for thirty minutes now, the beats that Dr. Dre makes for him. Or Still not the beats. Rhythm. You're not letting me finish. <laughs> or not the beats that Dr. Dre is accustomed to making. If and I heard, fine. if I heard, a, no, no, if I heard a bunch of, of of production, let's say Dr. Dre had a whole drive, 
and he's playing me all the stuff from the drive. I could pick out the stuff that he made for Eminem. No, I, I'm, and I, I actually agree with and what you're saying. And the whole cadence changes. No, I get what you're saying, but here's where we kind of part ways. You're sitting up here and saying, well, he doesn't have any rhythm. It's like, no, no, no. Do not tell me that these Dr. Dre beats, even though they are altered differently, do not have rhythm. That is still Dr. Dre. Like, do not tell me that. That's what I'm trying to tell you is, is that like, no, is it the rhythm or the melody that we're used to hearing from classic hip hop artists? No. Is it something that I normally listen to? No. But stop making it seem like Dr. Dre doesn't create every track with rhythm, Mike. It is why he is widely considered to be the greatest producer of all time in terms of hip hop terms. And so is it the rhythm that we like? No. But don't tell me that all these tracks, like I just got I just got done looking at like 30, 40 tracks he's rapped on with Dr. Dre. Do not tell me that this kid does not have rhythm. You do not get in the studio with Dr. Dre and rap over 30 or 40 of his tracks without rhythm. That's where uh, I'm coming from. Although I hear everything that you're saying, like what you're saying, Mike, in a vacuum, I agree with you. But when I look at it as a whole, it's like, well, how are we defining rhythm? Well, this is the thing. I think that if we look at those Dr. Dre tracks, yes, they may have a certain patch or feet rhythm to them. They're not the most rhythmic tracks. And maybe soul is the term that I'm looking for. More so than, I guess, rhythm. He doesn't but, have soul, Mike. The shit don't have no soul. Yeah, it's hollow. But we know that. And and you want to know what? He can be offbeat. But do not tell me. Like, I've heard this guy in too many ciphers, Mike. I've heard him rap over too many beats. Like, you remember, like, the uh, the 50 Cent uh, mixtapes where they're dissing uh, Ja Rule and all them? Like, he's jumping on, like, some of those old Tupac beats and stuff, too. Like, yeah, he's got some rhythm, Mike. Yeah, some. Like, some? So, uh, I don't know. It's all convoluted. Don't either one of these niggas deserve to be in the top 10? <laughs> DJ Bruce like Almighty with the like, Super Chat I'm says, not. I'm not a bigger Eminem fan, but he can rap. He stays true to him. His music isn't for us. Doesn't make it, um, doesn't make it trust. Doesn't make it trust. Okay. Um, let me get through these Super Chats. and We kind of went off on a tangent, but I like it. The Carlos coming back with even more. Says Mike is moving the goalposts. I'm convinced Eminem didn't want to sign you or something by the way you treat him. No disrespect. No disrespect taken. I just think his music's not good. I just think that his rhyming is um, non-rhythmic. And I think that when you're from Detroit and you've never rhymed over a Dilla record and you run from Premier Records, it's kind of suspect. Uh, Lex Diesel with the Super Chat says... Common and Pusher are both inferior rappers than Nas, but Kanye laced their albums way better than he did Nasir. He owes Nas an apology. I think, I think that the time and kind I of think that's just story, timing. Yeah, I think that it was rushed. I think that that and that's on Kanye. You know, from the stories that you've told me, you know, that you've had with the conversations you've had with the plug and all that, and how last minute a lot of things were and how rushed things were it's like when an artist like Nas that's not how you work and I think that both of them as great as they are at their individual traits I think at that moment in time their processes clashed and that's what we got well no here's what I think I think <clears throat> this is what I mean <clears throat> like Kanye is so big that even in a room with Nas he's like I'm Kanye so I'm gonna do Kanye things Mm -hmm. like that's how that's that's the level that Kanye is on for better and for worse and so for somebody like and it probably not affecting but so many people like that but you probably as a producer can't walk in the room with Nas like that you know what I'm saying yeah. and have the situation work because it's like you're Kanye it's like I'm Nas you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying but I think though not, uh, Kanye is still a fan but you know you're right Kanye still fan. understands that he's you but know, in his Kanye. mind he's Kanye yeah. So it's like, even if I give Nas 60% of my best shit, that's still 50% better than what the other producers give him in my mind. Right. I'm Kanye. Right. Right. Carlo with the Super Chat says, Eminem is the Jim Carrey of hip hop. That's why he's so cartoonish. I could see that. But we like Jim Carrey and we embrace him and he was the only white guy on Living Color. Except for, you know, if we're correlating funny to dope emceeing. Jim Carrey's actually really funny. Uh, 
<laughs> Chris Wright with the super chat says Eminem rhymed on those type of beats during his mixtape era and killed it pre Dr. Dre. Y'all need to send me these mixtapes. You know what? Um, info at according to hip hop dot com. Send me some links. I'm gonna dig and find you. Yeah, some I would love to hear some of the stuff there. y'all talking about because all the stuff that I've heard sound like that. Stop the beat a minute. That type of stuff. Um, Thirty six chambers with the super chat says I haven't heard much M. Uh, from the infinite days uh, was he rhyming over classic beats then what beats was he rhyming over in the battles back then not sure um chris white with the super chat says eminem sound bombing to any man of course we're gonna always go to any man of his long illustrious catalog we're gonna continuously talk about any man shout out to the beat great song. dj bruce almighty says you know what it, it's a great song but it's not 199 it's <laughs> like, but it's the second best song on that album in my what? opinion. After one nine nine, yes. Whoa, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'm not gonna let you get away with that one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're you pulling up Sound Bombing Two right now. You can go ahead. It's the no. second best song on Sound Bombing Two. No, 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 no. I remember we had that disc. Sound Bombing Two. I got Sound Bombing sitting over here on disc. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go through the track list. Sound bombing too. We got any man. Starts it off. It's not better than B Boy Document. It is. It's not better than B Boy Document. Are you serious? Yes. You're I not am. serious. I am. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna go to the super chats after that. Uh, Bruce Almighty says. Renegade. B-Boy Document wasn't like that, Mike. That's that old school rap head in you. Wow. That shit ain't holding up like that. Like, wow. Any man who talks about up. B-Boy Document, Mike? B-Boy Document's a classic. That's the first no, time I ever not. heard most stuff, by the way. DJ no, Bruce Almighty with the Super Chat says, Renegade was M's track and he produced it. Bad example, Mike. No, it's not. It's a good example because he has to produce most of the tracks that he's on because he can't rhyme over other people's stuff, Bruce Almighty. Why do you think that he actually produces in the first place? His beats are whack. I mean, respectfully, if there's any way to do that. Um, Jay Short with the Super Chat says, Coop, Eminem has um, no rhythm. That's why he had to end up producing for himself. He just said what I said before I even saw it. Not even Nas can rhyme over that cross corny beat. Agreed. Uh, Eric Terrell with the Super Chat says, Eminem rapped over Mob Deep in the movie. <laughs> you mean B-Rabbit. When, whenever we got to go to a movie to talk about somebody's accolades, a scripted film, you know you're lost. Uh, Leroy Green with the Super Chat says, Eminem is not trying to make Boom Bap records. He's from Trailer Park from Detroit, uh, uh, still factory era. Uh, that's his sound. It's a Rust Belt rock rap. Once again, Leroy, I got love for you, brother, but you seem like you have bought into the B-Rabbit 8 Mile notion as well. I think we look, at, we look at Eminem as what we saw in the movie for 8 Mile. 8 Mile is one of those things that changed the trajectory of his, of his legacy. Like, we look Mike. at that film, and that's his legacy. Even if it didn't even go down like that. You know what I mean? In all fairness to you, Mike, I'm going to tell you this. I'm looking at the sound bomb and soundtrack listing. The only argument for a record on here being better than any man is 199 and B-Boy Document. The rest of these records are not even in the same stratosphere. I'm it's go those listen three to, records. I'm going to go listen I'm to look, No, I'm looking at the songs, Mike. So it's like, if you think that any man isn't a top three song on this album, like, you're tripping. Like, it's clearly 199 B-Boy Document and, 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 and uh, any man on here. So it's like that. That's what I'm saying. He's like that, Mike. More people... How about this? If it wasn't for Common and Sadat making 199, like any man becomes like a bigger part of his legend than it even is because it's like, well, he showed up on the Sound Bombing album and made the best song. Eric Terrell with the Super Chat says, um, Mike know all Eminem verses. Got it down pat. Yeah. I mean, because Baby. I know the stuff. Baby. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to criticize something I don't know. You know Jeez. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, you don't know these verses by him. Hmm. You know you don't know no Eminem verses like that. <laughs> BCM, I do. I do. Uh, BCM, Coop, we appreciate you trying to be unbiased and play devil's advocate, but Mike's right about Eminem. 
Thirty-six chambers. Less than we're gonna keep it pushing. Thirty-six chambers with a super chat says, "In five years, Eminem will drop a line on a song about Mike hating on his rhymes. That will also be the song that finally addresses the black slim shady." Yeah, if you're waiting on him to address the black slim shady, it's never happening. I don't know oh, what's yeah, gonna never yeah, happen yeah. first: him being on a premiere track. Or actually responding to the game. How about that? We put that what challenge What other out. aspect of this list would you like to address, Mike? <laughs> Respond to the games, the real, the Black Slim Shady on the DJ premiere track. I'll be impressed. And I'll shut the fuck up. Uh, DeCarlo with the Super Chat says, The fact that two hip-hop heads are debating about Eminem like this is a win for him. The man deserves his respect. Uh, can he please get it for once? All right, well, let me do this. Let me read what they said about him being number five. Um, after coming you up... Should read, you should read Biggie first. Let's read Biggie first. So you can hear how crazy they sound for putting Eminem ahead of them. Biggie is number six and Eminem is number five. Yes. Um, Christopher Notorious B.I.G. Wallace. Ultimate rap phenomenon started in 1993's uh, Party and Bullshit. The Brooklyn, New York kingpin later signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Records, building a reputation for delivering gritty tales and laid-back style, accented by his deep tone, rumbling vocals, and signature dark sense hum- sense of humor. Excuse me. Biggie went on to score 16 Hot 100 hits, including number two, I'm sorry, two number ones, with More Money, More Problems, and Hypnotize. Uh, Big competed, completed two classic solo albums, 1994's Ready to Die, 1997's Double Disc Life After Death. The latter spent four weeks in number one on the Billboard Top 200. His executive producer status grew as he created his junior mafia clique, writing and producing their 1995 Conspiracy album and releasing um, breakout stars like Lil' Kim and their hardcore album in 1996. Six months after the death of Tupac, Biggie was murdered in a drive-by shooting in L.A. in 1997. So we'll never know uh, what the then 24-year-old could have accomplished had he been allowed as long of a storied career of his peers. Uh, but through only two studio albums that resonated nearly 30 years later, later, Wallace proved that charismatic big man could mix lyrical street rhymes, heart, and humor and permeate the mainstream with his style. I think that was beautifully written. Um, I mean, what, what can you say about big man? The nigga had everything. The most rounded MC so, ever. So listen to this, you know. 93 is like um, Party and Bullshit, Dreams, 94 is Ready to Die, 95 is Conspiracy, 96 is Hardcore, 97 is Life After Death and No Way Out, Mm -hmm. Biggie Smalls is the illest. (laughs) Yeah. Eric Terrell says, it's Dre changing the production. Is Dre changing the production for M? Or the listener. Good point. Or for not for the listener. Hold on. <clears throat> Here's how I look at it. I don't even look at it for the listener, for the audience. Well, the Eminem fan, because as I have right. covered before, Eminem fans aren't particularly hip hop fans like that. So it's like from a production See, standpoint, you're like, okay, well, I have to make a rap record for a non rap fan potentially, right? Oh, listen to what I'm saying. The write-up for Big sounds like the greatest MC of all time because that's actually what it was was happening. Mm-hmm. And so when people are like, "Well, you know, he didn't do enough," it's like, "Yes, yeah, he did. He did. He th- he he did enough. He just could have done so much more. He did enough. Oh yeah, nobody did, did more with two albums, and it's nobody, not even nobody close. did more in that. Uh, Mike, four years. Listen." Ready to die, conspiracy, hardcore, life after death, no way out. Like, yeah, boom. And think about all the stuff that yeah. he's on in between time, in, in, in between time on all that. That's what I'm saying. It's like, no, ain't nobody did that. I mean, bottom line, even with just that window of, like you said, 94 to 97, I don't think there's anybody in hip hop that could really hands down beat him in a versus. It would have to be like three of the top guys, Jay, Nas, and Pop. Anybody else, you're probably not going to beat Biggie in a versus. 
the work is there. People yeah. keep asking why. I'm like, because the work is there. Yeah. The work is there. Even with the brevity, it's like, no, it's still there. It's like, go, go, go put him up against somebody. It's like, how about this? The person Throw that's get in front money. of him, the person that's in front of him and behind him do not want no smoke with him. Okay? Throw him in the way do not want no smoke with Big's catalog like today. Right. You hear what I'm saying? No, for real. Eminem and Wayne don't want no smoke today with this man's catalog. Today. Yeah. Throw on Get right Money. Now. Throw on Get right Money, now. and that's not even on one of his two albums. How about this? You can throw on Get Money. That might be the Millie. That's one of Wayne's five best bangers. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not even a Biggie song. No, it's not. Let me you read what they that? said. Well, let me get to Brandon Sloan real quick. He says, you want Boom Bap M to go listen uh, to the first tape, Infinite. Well, first of all, I don't really want that. And Infinite's not that good. You know what I mean? It's just a regular MC rhyming over some beats. I don't really want this that is... from him. I'm just saying, when you put him up to these people, it's not at that level. You can't no, no, sit no. here See, and tell me I mean, Infinite. No. Infinite's not ready to die level. It's not Illmatic level. What all came out in 96, man? Are we serious? It's not AT Aliens level. It's not the infamous level. I know that was Hell on Earth year. It's not uh, All Eyes on Me. It's not Machiavelli. It's not Iron Man. So, no, I don't want Infinite. I don't. No. You're, <laughs> what are you no, talking you're, about? You're, you're right about that. But this is what I mean about talking to the glove changing some things for me. It's like, well, look at it from this perspective. Let me submit this to you. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll understand this as, as an owner of, of a business. Dr. Dre is used listen to what i'm saying he's used to going quadruple platinum with a known gang banger you feel what i'm saying he's selling three listen he's selling three four five million records like the chronic is doing four and doggy style's doing five so he done sold damn near 10 million albums off two records with a known gang banger from long beach a black dude mm -hmm. do you think that with he's and he's been double platinum, like Glove said, with Easy since '88, straight out mm -hmm. of Compton. Easy does it, double platinum. This nigga used to seeing two, three, four, five million records sold on some street shit. And you put a white boy that can rap in the room. Do you think that Dr. Dre's motif and archetype is going to be to keep this guy street or to double the number of records sold without the street shit? Because that's yeah. how he's looking at it, probably as a businessman. That's fine, and I don't knock that. Just like how we were talking about Jay dumbing down his uh, his uh, flow to double his dollars, I, I said that, that in the previous. I, to yeah, I, I said in the previous episode that he's in a different ball game because he actually has a record company that him and his partner started, and they yep. have to turn profit. That yep. doesn't change the fact that because they had to do that and they were successful with it, the volume two is now his best album. No. But you know what I mean? Like, we can consider all those things you said, but that doesn't elevate the work. But you know what I'm saying? Jay like, it that. does it. But when, but, but Jay it elevates the work on Dre's end. Hold on, but this is what I'm saying. That's why I kind of bought Jay up last week when I was talking about him and how the people eat around him. Well, here's the thing about it. That's not totally true. And this is what I'm saying. Eminem was a notorious, like, battle. Like, he was more of a black thought Eminem, most, I mean, Black Thought, Rakim, most Def Talib Kweli type of MC than the guy that you're seeing do guilty conscience in about me with Dr. Dre, but it appears that he dumbed his shit down to make more dollars and impact the culture positively, which he has done with 50, Shay 45, Royce, amongst others, and we laud Jay for that. We laud Jay for what he brought to the table in its totality and at the compromise and the sacrifice of some of that lyrical tenacity that you're talking about. And so how can we laud Jay for and totally miss the step that it's like, well, technically, the white boy did the same thing. Because the think... white boy didn't, because that whole, hi, my name is Mike, and you know this, when he did that, Mike, I was floored. Because nothing I had heard from him before sounded remotely like that. He was on some rap shit and on some superhero, super lyrical miracle rap shit. Like he was on some cannabis type shit. Exactly. But see, the thing and the difference is, even when Jay. And then was, Dr. Dre was like, we going to go diamond, but we not going diamond with you rapping like that. Well, I get that. But this is what I'm saying in comparison of the two. Even when Jay actually dialed his style down. 
he still made records that were important to the culture. And whereas Eminem did those things to sell records, which is cool. And I think there was a great production job and great production choice by Dre. So, but the truth of the matter is, those records just didn't resonate with hip hop. And that's culture. not. But I've always told you, Mike, and we've had this conversation before. I hold Dre responsible for that more than M. How old is Eminem? How old is this? How old is this young white man coming from a, a trailer park environment in Detroit? How old is he when he's being placed in this hardcore hip hop environment with Dr. Dre? And I, and I don't care what anybody says. When you're in probably the position that he's in as a young man, white or black, and Dr. Dre sits you in a room and is like, hey, you know, let's go. Like, you go, Mike. That's fine. Like, and I get and, that. And, and, you and, got and, your and, shot and, and you take it. You know what I'm right, saying? And again, right. this ain't a blame game or like, you know, blame him, blame him. I'm just looking at the work and I'm placing the work accurately. I don't, it doesn't really, you're right. It is the producer's fault. He's the more experienced person. But for what Dre was trying to accomplish, it worked financially for him in Aftermath. And, and I think Eminem was compensated as well. And obviously he's held high marks also. But the catch-22 is the fact that you guys didn't go through hip-hop channels with his commercial material to actually make him um, as, as economically viable as he is. Mm -hmm. And that, and this is just the drawback of it. It's just the reality of and it. We're not the, gonna. You're not just gonna go through pop channels and then come back around and we say that this was running hip hop in '99 and 2000. It was. This is what I'm saying. So, Mike, this is what I mean. It's like, well, he didn't skip that channel. It's like people act like that channel didn't exist when he got with Dre. He was already running around in the streets. He was running around with the Roots and uh rod digger and the outsiders and like all these guys that's how they all know him that's how he ended up on sound bombing so he was out in the streets mike dre is the one that took him by the streets that's what i'm saying it's like no he was doing that stuff and then dre took him and then we got hi my name is like there's none of that before dre that's dre that's why i've always told you dre's responsible for that if not we get the white red man you feel what i'm saying well, we didn't. I'm just basing things on what we got. You know what I mean? I feel what you're no, saying, I and you. I know it's history, but, you know, it is what it is. No, I hear you, and you're right to a degree. It's like, Dre, you know what, and I look on it, it's like, no, I mean, maybe Dre didn't keep him rooted in some of those records enough. Maybe, like, Dre should have been telling him, it's like, yo, let's do an any man type of record for the fans, too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, there if, been some of that too. if Carmelo Anthony gets drafted to the Pistons instead of the Nuggets, we got a two-time champion out the gate. But it didn't happen. No, you know? I hear you. <laughs> Jay Where Short with the next? Super Chat says, uh, so now we have to pretend that there's some secret vault of Eminem mixtapes uh, filled with Pete Rock, DJ Quick, and Premier Beats. We need to stop this. <laughs> I agree with you. Yo, let me read what Billboard actually said. Uh, Go Having him at number five. It says, after coming up, with, coming up in freestyle battles, eight mile again, Eminem was continuously willed at the mic um, as his weapon of choice and obliterated anyone who comes in his path, except for the game, right? Uh, as seen in countless feuds he engages over the years, countless feuds with pop stars and women, uh, with unapologetic, controversial, and um, yet frequent hilarious bars and unparalleled rhyme schemes and syncopations. I told you, that's the verbiage they use when it comes to him. He's relished play, uh, playing the role as rap supervillain. <laughs> supervillain. M also... Um, <laughs> You're not helping with that. Sort of... <laughs> M also spits a mile a minute, breaking Guinness World Records like fast rap in a, single, in a hit single, Godzilla, where he raps 225 words in 30 uh, second segments. Told you they use this type of stuff in uh, with 15 Grammy Awards, uh, 10 number one uh, Billboard 200 albums, and three RIAA uh, certified diamond singles. Lose Yourself, Love the Way You Lie, and Not Afraid. I'm not afraid. His unprecedented commercial success makes him one of the most uh, noteworthy rags to riches tales in uh, popular music. His award winning 2002 uh, biographical film, Eight Mile, extremely important, 
even depicts the Detroit bred MC real life struggle to uh, be accepted as a white rapper in hip hop, a genre created and dominated by black people. But with the peerless uh, technical skills, larger than life personality and turned on uh, a turn of the century run of classic albums, Slim Shady has rightfully earned his spot in the upper echelon of goat rappers list. You see, <clears throat> this is what I'm saying. This is why I wanted you to read the Biggie thing first. They didn't have to qualify Biggie because Biggie's qualified. And that's how you know. And that's where I do agree with you. It's M that's why M doesn't deserve to be up this high, but deserves to be considered. Because you have to qualify with explanations that you don't have to qualify with the people that he sandwiched to paint. Now read Tupac shit. When you read Tupac and Biggie shit, it reads like, "But well, this is the greatest MC of all time." They'll be when able to read, actually name when read, songs. When you read when you read Eminem shit, it's like, "Let me give you a reason why you should consider him to be the greatest MC of all time." See, Biggie and Pac shit just gonna read, and I already know it, and that's why he doesn't belong. And these are the intangible nuances that I'm talking about, but that don't mean that he don't have rhythm. <laughs> AB Studio with the super chat says Kanye had the most Jay Z features. Uh, in his catalog for a reason. I don't think Jay's music didn't do well better after Kanye out of the picture. So I don't think Jay-Z music uh, didn't do well better after Kanye was out of the picture. No, nah, I mean, Kanye was the executive producer of the Blueprint 3. Uh, I think the best thing Jay did with Kanye out of the picture was American Gangsta, honestly. And the biggest song on there, Kanye's on the hook. I mean, it's just the reality of the situation there. Um, let me get to the rest of these Super Chats. John Green with the $20 Super Chat showing love. He says, Nas won a Grammy for his 11th best album. It's almost as if he got tired of being black, of tired of blackballing him or knew that they owed him. Uh, it would be obvious if they were uh, to hand out another Lifetime Achievement Award after a lifetime of uh, snubs. They need to go show some love to Snoop, man. 20 nominations and uh, zero wins for somebody like Snoop Dogg is just... You know, again, just like I told you about Missy and the whole Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, you know, and Eminem with Snoop, it's like Dr. Dre has clicked in with the Grammys, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why do they keep overlooking Snoop? I'm starting to think this is personal. Like, gang banger. They just gave Dr. Dre a lifetime banger, achievement he award. A, he represents a part of culture and a part of society that white America still refuses to acknowledge, and that's the fact that there are gangs that exist. And it's not just black gangs, because to be honest with you, Hispanic gangs, which you should be really... Never mind, Mike. I haven't said too much. But, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of different groups in their gangs. Um, but, but yeah, uh, as far as Snoop yeah. goes, though, and it's sad because Snoop does everything... He does everything to be a family-friendly individual. Like, he left that stuff alone. And you did a great dissertation on this on one of our few episodes ago when you said after his trial, he changed up all this gangster shit. Like, he ain't been fucking with no gangster shit. You know, I mean, maybe some songs here and there. But he's had nothing but, like, upbeat records for the past 20-some-odd no, years. Even, but, Mike, this is what I'm saying. Like, he used to talk like gangster shit. And now he says stuff like, like if the most gangster thing you'll find him saying is, is like, yeah, on the left side, that's the crip side. Ain't another way. Like, that's that's his gangster talk now. That's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> nigga, the nigga on murder was a case. I know the niggas from the other side recognize my face because it's the OG. Like, that's different talk. Like, it's different talk. You feel what I'm saying? And so, like, but, but he's being stigmatized for that talk by this uh this white racist agenda that quite frankly does not want to encourage gang culture and even though he's not an active gang member he has represented the crip nation enough and white america knows it so they're like no we'll love you we'll embrace you and we'll even let martha stewart smoke weed with you but we ain't giving you no accolades nigga not with your gang banging ass no there'll be none of that nigga. i think i nigga, agree with you though nigga. i think it's an image thing because they do the same thing to 50 cent and he's clicked in with that whole crew too he He's not get, a gangbanger. He don't get, but I'm saying, he don't get no awards from these shows either. They don't want to acknowledge that street. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
And some of it too, 50 men shot. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's really been shot? See, like, for real? The part like, that I don't streets? like, and they did the same... Like, yes, in the streets, motherfucker. Where you think he got shot and at? And they did the same thing with Snoop when it came to the murder trial and all that. You use all of those things to sell records, but when it's time to actually acknowledge these people for the work that they've done, it's it's crickets. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Hey, look here. Not, not, not being funny. People trying to act like murder ain't never existed. They are. Um... Eminem. That's because the feds went in there. You feel what I'm saying? No, you're right. And lost. Lost bad. Irv ain't never been the same since. They took all that nigga's assets. Yeah. Froze his shit up. It's never been the same. These white people do not care about us. This um, I feel like Kanye. It's time this to sentence right here uh, is interesting to me where it says Eminem is uh, continuously wielded the mic as a weapon of choice and obliterated anyone who comes in his path. Gaming on this list. I see. Can we go to Tupac at four? We can do that. Uh, DFW Herbie says, "How can Biggie be top five with two albums, Coop?" I think you already addressed that. I think we've already explained that. Uh, Andrew Green with the super chat says, "I'm late, but shout out to whoever mentioned QB's finals earlier. Uh, Street Glory with Nas and Blitz is fire." Yeah. Told you, there's shit yeah. on there, Mike. Yeah. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I'll give Eminem credit for doing that album with Royce. Ain't no premiere stuff on there either, Jay Short. That's more than Nas did with AZ or Jay-Z did with Bleak. Uh, he didn't have to do that. Mm. Mm? <laughs> I, you know, I, I think it's, you know, whatever. I, I You know, I, it feels, feels like he kind of did, but, you know. That's just my opinion. It's not like he did it in 2000 or something. Uh, Eric Terrell with the Super Chat says, uh, Mike, did you like Criminal by Eminem? I did. But I do think it's interesting some of those lines in there that he never got backlash for, like the Versace line and all that stuff. It's wild. But I did like that song. It was cool. My song on that album is, like I said, Amityville. When he raps like that, I can rock with that. I can dig that. I can rock with him with him rapping like that. No, I actually I can like the the record that he did uh, going to Everlast too. I love uh, I remember. I rem and his rap verse on I remember fire. Hip I love the sauce turning, too. Hip hop's turning fifty this year, Mike. I just want to put everybody in the mixer properly, including Eminem. No, no, I, I, I love the, the discourse. Properly, I love the discourse, and you know you're being fair because I can sound like I'm not being fair sometimes. Well, I mean, I mean, Mike, <laughs> if 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 I was if I was making my list, it's like Pusha T would be ahead of like 17 guys that like I've already been named. You know what I'm 